Hi there, welcome to uh, Meet the Leaders. Here we are in Albany, opening day, and you hear a little of the hubbub. That's the enthusiasm that's going on from visitors and those who've been elect alike here. Hi, I'm David Smith. Good to have you with us on Meet the Leaders. And we have Assemblywoman Dee Dee Barrett as our guest in this one. She represents the 106th District, uh, Columbia County, Dutchess County, and it's good to see you, Dee Dee. Welcome. It's great to see you, David. Thank you so much. Congratulations on yet another victory. Thank you, thank you. Yes, very excited to be back here. and. You know, with a full of ideas and you know an interesting portfolio. So, really looking forward to this session. Well, people, it seems all of your colleagues are as well. I mean, it, it's there's something always to the opening of any session, to be sure. But this session in particular seems to have stimulated more interest and more excitement, and more positive expectations than uh, others in the past. Mm -hmm. You feeling that way? Well, definitely. And and one of the reasons, uh, you know, in specific for me is that we have so many more women elected in the legislature, both houses, 70 in the New York State Legislature now, exciting. which is a high. We have a, uh, a woman majority leader in, um, in, in, in our uh, chamber, in the assembly, and uh, just you know minutes ago, uh, Andre Stewart Cousins was sworn in as the majority leader there in the are. New York State Senate. So I think it's a pretty exciting time as somebody who has, you know in a very short uh, number of years since I've been elected, seen a huge transformation. Um, I think it's very exciting, and I, I, I do believe actually I'm now the chair of uh, Veterans Affairs. I think I may well be the first woman uh, ever to hold that chairmanship, chairpersonship. So, well, and goodness knows that that is an area that has been focused on a great deal in recent years, as it should have. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of work and, and success has been made there, but there is clearly so much more to be done. Absolutely, and I think that the, um, you know, the, the need to have more focus certainly on women veterans and you know, and women as part of families, as the families are um, impacted as well as the returning veterans, but uh, also on mental health. One of my priorities is going to be to look at mental health and uh, behavioral you know, health veterans. In, around veterans, <clears throat> really as a jumping point, off point for making sure that all of that happens for the broader population in the end as well, but certainly starting with our veterans who uh, you know, we have really let down in a lot of ways uh, when it comes to those kinds of uh, programs and support and services. Well, now, how, how much of that is affected by the viewpoint from Washington, and how much is strictly out of the Empire State? Well, I think I think it's beyond that. I think it's cultural. I think we really uh, have not yet removed a stigma around mental health issues that um, is really toxic and uh, impacts people's willingness to talk about the issue, the kind of services that are made available, the amount of money that's put forward. Um, I think that you know when we look at issues like prevention in, um, in, in uh, physical health, everybody knows the kinds of things you have to do, but when you talk about prevention around mental and behavioral health, substance abuse, all of those things, people's eyes glaze over. They don't really know, you know where to begin. And I think these are really important issues that we need to be starting to address. And by focusing on our returning veterans, it's an opportunity to, um, to bring much needed services, but also showcase the need and uh, opportunities for us to do a better job. You know, you, you mentioned prevention in, in mental health areas. Um, for veterans, it's a little bit more difficult. It is. Uh, I mean, it, they're it dealing. It is foisted upon them in most instances, right. in many instances. Right. Absolutely. And when they're returning, um, you know, I think helping them acknowledge that there is. So maybe the prevention is not exactly what what the issue is there, but from the get-go, addressing the emotional and uh, psychological impacts of what they've experienced, you know, in a way that you know is not um, unmanly or not you know thought of as you know. It, there's so many stigmas around this that are, you know, that that get in the way of um, people seeking treatment, people recognizing the issues, and I think, you know, I would say preventive. You could do going into it. I think if we, if the military looked at how um, preparing families and veterans for what some of the the impact of these of those experiences could be, and I don't know, you know, I'm certainly not a, a military person, but I, I think, you know, I think we just need to address mental and behavioral health in a much more holistic way that that you know makes it uh, on the radar screen from the beginning. You know, even taking this away from the veterans issue, when we visit schools in our district, in my district, 
the classroom teachers, the, the principals and, and the superintendents all say that mental health is the number one issue, whether we're talking about mm. kindergarten, elementary school, middle school, or high school. So uh, anxiety, depression, um, all sorts of things that they're seeing on the news, things that they're seeing in their communities, all of these are impacting kids. So mental health is a huge, huge issue. Well, how are they dealing with it in the schools? I mean, there, there isn't that much mental health professional it's a support. problem it's a problem and you know the teachers are saying that a lot of their time is being spent on those kinds of issues that would otherwise be focused on um, you know on classroom learning and they're not able to do that so it, it's you know this is something that I really do hope that we will start getting much more um, engaged in in New York State and being leaders and, and starting with our veterans. How much interaction will you have as, as heading up the Veterans Administration here in New York with the the uh, federal veterans system. Well, you know, I think it just it depends. I mean, it, the, the obviously veterans issues are generally federal issues, um, but you know, we in in a state like New York recognize the roles that we play as families come back. So, I mean, our focus really is uh, at home and and um, and the services for our our uh, veterans and their families, and you know, particular things that the that we can push the federal government government on if you know if need be but it isn't you know I, I, I don't I'm at this point with this administration it's not something that I'm seeing as a you know yep. a, a natural channel of communication hey uh, congratulations all the way around thank you uh, and in talking with so many of your female colleagues uh, they are just so excited about being recognized getting the support from the constituents as well as here and I think it's going to be a very interesting year all the way I think you're going around. to see different kinds of leadership with more women in leadership roles. And uh, I'm really excited to be part of that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Assemblywoman Dee Dee Barrett of the Hudson District, our guest on this edition of Meet the Leaders. Obviously, another enthusiast for getting going and getting the job done here in Albany. For Meet the Leaders, I'm David Smith.